because I'm not from the SS myself, I sort of had to ring them up and say, look, this this opportunity has come our way. How do you feel about a tanky uh, um, doing your sort of story? And the SS are notoriously standoffish with dealing with anything with media and the press for obvious reasons. They would never, ever advise on something like this. So, yeah, we got sort of, not the nod, but we got the, if we'll find you. Uh, uh, from them, when you're following history, it makes things easier because you've got a framework to hang everything off of. But it also makes things difficult because there are a lot of people out there who know the history, so you can't tinker with it too much. So our job was to sort of read through the script and pick up any major problems that we could see. Like a regiment, it is based a lot on the command structure about how that regiment functions. So with a film set, you've got a lot of personalities at the top, such as the producers, uh, the director. Those people have a clear idea of what it is they want to do, and your job is to advise them. Day one, week one on the set, tr trying to sort of get 30 seconds with the director saying, I understand this is the way in the script. I'm not quite sure why it's this way. We have a lot of people who are going to know their history who are going to be very confused about why Tobruk has fallen 12 months earlier. The technical accuracy was a real team effort because you had various departments working on it. Um, we had the vehicle team, you had the, uh, the props team, you had the hair and makeup team, a costume and wardrobe, you know, loads of people. Right, you mean it. Probably the biggest technical feat for the show was actually filming in the desert. We were shooting in 53 degree heat. So there was the technical challenge of, of keeping all the kit running and all the people. It's a bit windy. And it was a constant sort of battle of like one Jeep would, would fail. It's like, right, how can we get another Jeep in and make it look like that Jeep? There's a tank at the end of the show, a 1970s tank. And again, it was what we could afford to borrow from the Moroccan army, bearing in mind we were 500 miles into the desert. Are you in charge here? Uh, the desert's in charge here. Maybe you've learned that, sir. You see the SAS get more weaponry as they go through. We try to have a, a sort of sense of them developing tactics and up-armoring themselves. So at the start, they've got Lewis guns and Bren guns, and then towards the end, they get the, 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 the Vickers K guns, which are designed to be anti-aircraft guns. A lot of the heavy machine guns that we had weren't real. They were dummy guns or, or gas-operated guns, just because another technical challenge is getting weapons into Mor Morocco. With anything, if an actor's doing something unnatural, trying to smoke, trying to ride a horse, drive a car, if they're not used to it, a, most of their brain is, is taken up with trying to do that and not enough of it is going on the acting. And B, it's really obvious if they've never done it before. With weaponry, it's all about trying to get the actor comfortable with the weapon as if they've used it their entire lives, as if it's, it's, it's an extension of their body. Most actors are like sponges. Jack was particularly good because Jack was sort of toying with the idea of joining the Marines perhaps when he was younger. They had a lot of work to do, but they still took the time to learn as much as they, they could. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.